Well, it's just so interesting is the facts of this case come to light. <clears throat> the medicine side of this is confounding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and shocking. I, yeah. None of this makes sense to me. My impression is that this, you know, this doctor, he was being paid a large amount of money. Mm -hmm. $150,000 a month. A month, that's what, over a million and a half a year. Yeah. Uh, and he was over his head. He was trying to do things that he just wasn't, didn't have the training to do. Sanjay, any final okay. thoughts? Well, you know, one of the things that comes up a lot and I, you know, people have been asking about is the relationship between doctors and, you know, uh, celebrity patients. Uh, and, you know, one of the, one of the, the things you hear in this testimony is how much was Michael Jackson sort of influencing Dr. Murray's decisions, pushing him to do certain things. I think as doctors, you know, we, we always say that we treat all patients the same, no matter their status, no matter how much money they're paying or, or paid or any of that sort of stuff. But you do wonder over the years, Michael Jackson seemed to have had a whole list of doctors who, who seems gave him these types of medications. And what is interesting, and this is where, you know, being someone well known can actually be adversely impact your health care. I mean, you know, they, he was getting probably terrible health care as a result. But propofol as an example, as you said, Travis, that's not a medication for sleep. In fact, it doesn't, it, it puts you into uh, your brain essentially uh, into a state where it's under general anesthesia. That is not the same as sleep. It is not restorative. You don't wake up from that feeling refreshed. And that's probably part of the reason why he was tired all the time. He thought he was getting sleep, but he wasn't. He used to call for this by name. He said, I want my milk tonight because it looks like that milk substance that Dr. Orton was holding up, but it wasn't doing what he hoped it would be doing for him ever. Well, in the end, it certainly is a tragic scenario, regardless of what all the facts are. Sanjay, thanks so much for joining us today and giving us your thoughts. We hope to see you on the show again soon. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Anytime. I don't spend a lot of time watching all the theatrics on television, but I can tell you I am just floored yeah. by some of the this facts of this case. And, and, you know, I think the lesson here is if you can afford it, don't don't pay one hundred fifty thousand dollars a month for a personal physician because you could influence their behavior. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if you're paying someone that much money and you you're say, gonna, "Give me my," they're not going to say no. Right. In an idealistic world, none of those doctors should have, no matter how much money he said mm -hmm. he would give them, should have done something that was going to eventually be harmful to him. And it gets more bizarre every day.